Hello, I'm Dan Schmieler from First Section, and today we're going to talk about stable call. Preparing the 175 horses, which belong to a six-gun battery, for daily service in the artillery required a strict adherence to the protocol laid out in Instruction for Field Artillery under General Rules for Stable Management and Grooming. Stable call was a daily aspect of the Civil War artilleryman's life, which, unlike attempting to recreate combat, can be accurately recreated to the smallest detail. Before we dig into stable call, let's talk about how the picket line or the stables were organized. The manual states, the horses should be stalled according to their positions in the battery. Their places on the picket line will be in accordance with the same rule. The team of the flank is placed on the end of the picket rope in front and that of its caisson next. Then comes the teams of the next piece and the caisson, and so on in the same order. The horses of the chief of the pieces are with their appropriate teams. The guidon bearer, bugler, and officer horses are near the end of the picket rope. Through this organization of the picket line, the drivers knew the exact location of their team on the picket rope every time they came into camp. One of the best references of life in the artillery was John Billings' Hardtack and Coffee. He writes the following about Stable Call. Stable Call summoned all the drivers in the company to assemble at the grain pile with their pair of canvas nosebags, where the stable sergeant, so-called his rank was that of a private, although sometimes put on the air of a brigadier general, furnished each with the usual ration of grain, either oats or corn. With this forge and a curry comb and brush, they at once proceeded to the picket rope, where under the inspection of six sergeants, supervised also by the officer of the day and the orderly, the horses were thoroughly groomed. At a given signal, the grooming ceased and the nosebags were strapped on. Sometimes a feed was given while the grooming was in progress. One of the jobs listed in both the manual as well as hardtack and coffee is stable sergeant. It is important to note that the stable sergeant is not actually a sergeant, but a private with additional assigned duties. The stable sergeant was responsible for the distribution of the hay and grain ration, as well as keeping track of the battery grooming tools. Now let's take a look at the tools needed to conduct stable call. Under grooming, the manual states, the wisp, curry comb, and brush are the implements used. The wisp is to be used when the horses come in warm from exercise and the hair is rubbed until dry from his hindquarters against the hair up to the head. The curry comb is used when the horse is dry, beginning always on the near side at the hindquarters, its application being in proportion to the length and foulness of the coat, that is, if the coat is close, long, full of dust, and very filthy, use it freely to loosen the coat or the sweat that is dried and fast on the skin, and the roots of the hair appearing like a white, saltish dust. Proceed from the hindquarters, descend to the quarters, minding not to scratch or injure the horse. The legs below the hocks are not to be touched with the curry comb unless the dirt is matted on to the joints of the hocks, which may be carefully loosened with the curry comb. The comb works unpleasantly on that part and it must be handled lightly. Next, proceed to the fetlocks, back, loins, flank, belly, shoulders, arms, chest, and neck, omitting no part that the curry comb can be conveniently applied to but tender places, thin of hair, or rubbed by the harness need not be touched. They should be rubbed with the wisp. Observe, therefore, to begin with the curry comb on the near hindquarters and finish with the head, keeping the comb in the right hand. After curing the near side, proceed with the off side. Here, use the left hand. This done, wisp off those places not touched by the curry comb, then use the brush. The brush. Begin first at the head on the near side, taking the brush in the left hand and the curry comb on the right, brushing more particularly those parts where the dust is more apt to be lodged. Proceed down the neck. The scurf of the neck next to the head and the scrag next to the mane are difficult to clean. Apply the brush backward and forward on these places. Finish by leaving the coat smooth. Clear the brush from dust every two or three strokes with the curry comb. Proceed in the reverse order used by the curry comb, taking in those parts not touched by the curry comb, that is, under the chest, between the forelegs, the inside of the elbow of the arm, and the parts about the fetlock. So to put it simply, the curry comb begins at the hindquarters and ends at the head, 
and the brush begins at the head and ends at the hindquarters. You may be thinking you forgot about the hoof pick. Any horseman knows that the health of the hoof directly correlates to the health of the animal. For some reason, however, the U.S. military did not issue hoof picks during the American Civil War. You may be thinking that's where you're wrong. I've got this federal issue hoof pick. It's got U.S. stamped right on the head. Even though some certain sutlers have attempted to pass this off as a issue item, the Robert Stout patented hammer hoof pick wasn't around until 1870. Nowhere in the ordnance manual, the instruction for field artillery, poinsettes, or cooks do we see the words hoof pick used. A quick search in the vast files of the research arsenal didn't yield a single reference of hoof pick used either. Even though the US military did not issue hoof picks, the idea of cleaning the horse's feet wasn't new to the soldiers of the Civil War. Civilian horsemanship manuals of the period mentioned care of the foot. Foreign military manuals, such as this 1851 British 5th Dragoon Guards Manual, are noted as issuing hoof pickers to their troops. There was slight variation of how the picks were referred to, sometimes being called foot cleaner, foot sweepers, or simply pickers. However, in the end, they accomplished the same task. At Civil War sites across the country, it is not uncommon to find dug examples of crudely made hoof picks, which were easily made by the artificers of the unit. Nevertheless, the horse's feet need to be cleaned during stable call. Using the artificer created hoof pick, start with the front feet. Standing facing the rear of the horse, grasp the cannon bone just above the fetlock and apply slight pressure. Most horses will immediately lift their leg and give you their foot. Lifting the hoof between your legs, utilize your hoof pick to clean out the sole, the frog, and the central sulcus of the foot, ensuring there are no rocks or other foreign debris remaining in the hoof. Once the front foot is complete, move to the back foot. Again, grasping the cannon bone with the inside hand, pick up the hoof, bringing yourself up and under, extending the hoof to the rear. Clean out the hoof in the same manner as the front. I'd like to know one thing if you're paired up with a horse who doesn't willingly give you his foot or attempts to fight you. Unless you're the horse owner, you may not know the particularities of that horse. Some horses may be just in a bad mood, but others may be an older horse and might have some arthritis or have some injuries in the past. Shorty here is an older horse who has some arthritis in his hocks. Keeping his foot low and forward is more comfortable for him when picking the foot. Talk to the owner and see what the particularities of the animal may be. So how long did they have to groom their horses? And when did they know when they were done? The manual states, Each horse of a team should be groomed about 20 minutes. Then at the signal, lead up, the chief of each piece inspects his horses successively, exacting that the rules laid down under the head of grooming shall be strictly complied with. If not, the horses will be taken back to the picket line for an additional 30 minutes of grooming. So what else takes place during stable call? The manual goes on to say, At morning stable call, the stable guard, assisted by the supernumerary men, police the stables, take up the bedding, and that which is soiled to the manure heap. The men habitually groom their own horses, superintended by the chiefs of pieces, Supernumerary horses may be groomed by recruits, carefully supervised and instructed. The horses of the officers and the chief of pieces are groomed by the men of their commands. The stable guard and the stable duty are under the direction of the battery officer of the day, the first sergeant and the stable sergeant. Well, there you have it. Now you know how to recreate one of the most common jobs done on a daily basis by the Civil War soldiers. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the field.